Okay, so I am out today uh, in an area called the New Forest. This is in the, uh, the south of England. And this is a place that uh, I came about six months ago, this specific area, uh, just kind of on a whim. This is called the Ashley Bombing Range or the Ashley Walk. And this was back in World War II, uh, an area where they did a lot of their bomb testing. They even tested one of the biggest bombs ever dropped on Britain that they obviously then used later in the war. It's just a really fascinating area. There's like craters and uh, old structures and all these little signs from the past. So. I was out here shooting 4x5 and I just struggled a little bit with perspective, so um, I had this idea to come back with a ladder, maybe like a six foot tall ladder and go on a nine kilometer hike to see if this helps a little bit. Go visit some of these areas, gain like a little bit of height, hopefully make a few images and uh, see if this is a, a terrible idea or not. <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to unwrap this. I literally just picked it up from the grocery store this morning like an hour ago. We're going to get out. Got like five hours, so I want to try and make the most of my time here today. Should be fun. So this is probably also just going to be the most ridiculous uh, footage, hiking footage that I've filmed. <laughs> Carrying a ladder. It was really difficult online to uh, like, you know, read the specs in terms of height and gauge what was going to be awkward and what <sighs> Wouldn't be awkward because I obviously I don't want to carry something out that's going to give me like a, a foot of lift off the ground. I wanted some some height, so uh, yeah, this will this will do. It's on the verge of being ridiculous to carry, but we'll see. Anyways, running this trash back to the car and then we'll go. This is already paying off. <laughs> it's a first for me. Thank you very much. So like I said, I did come out to this area last year and just a short trip, but I've really wanted to get back, but I found myself like almost just waiting, waiting for perfect conditions or, or telling myself that. And that's one of the things I've tried to, um, or want to switch up this year is like, just go, 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 go and make work. Just because like unexpected things happen a lot. I know that happened in my last video, had a couple nice surprises, but also just like what I think is the right conditions aren't always the right conditions. You know, not everything has to be like the loudest and the most dramatic. So cloudy day, light clouds, but it might work nice for this stuff. Excited regardless to explore this place. Okay, so this is kind of where everything starts right here. You have this huge clearing. I'm not incredibly familiar with like the specifics when it comes to the history of this place. So I'm not gonna try and talk too much in detail about it until I learn some more. But basically, when you come out here, you can go you know, kilometers that way. There's a bunch of craters. There's this kind of perimeter track. There's an old observation post out there, uh, area, areas where like signal lights were. There's a big uh, concrete arrow in the ground still, which I'm assuming was, uh, like a marker for one of the targets. But there's two things in particular that I'm kind of interested in focusing on today, and that is these two craters, or uh, one crater and one that's been filled in from these two bombs that they tested out here. Uh, one was called the Grand Slam, which was the largest bomb ever dropped on the UK. Obviously it was for testing. And then the second one is uh, this Tallboy bomb. So the Tallboy crater is still there. It's filled in with water. It's kind of a neat vantage point where you can get up high to photograph it. Uh, but the Grand Slam, I did manage to find the location of it online and I thought it could be kind of neat, even though the crater isn't there anymore, it was filled in, um, just to be able to like photograph that landscape uh, could make for an interesting image, especially with the context behind it. So uh, yeah, this is a place you could for sure come out to and spend, I think, days exploring. So I'll have to come back, but for now, I'm going to get out there, got about four hours of light and focus on those two things. Okay, I just got out to this area. I didn't film much of the walking, but this is the first spot I wanted to check out. So this is actually, I believe it was an old Target uh, bomb shelter that they were testing, but it's been covered now. Um, obviously, now it's just this big mound of earth, but on the other side is this crater from that Tallboy bomb that I was talking about earlier. 
and there's a ton of smoke right now coming from those fires. So that could be, this might actually align perfectly. I think tall boys that way. So I just ditched my pack and stuff. I'm gonna try and be quick here while these conditions exist and see if we can get something set up here. So I'll scout it and then run back. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that down there, all that smoke in the background, but that right there in front of it, that is the crater from uh, the tall boy bomb. Let's see if we get a bit closer and see how this looks. And obviously just filled with water. It's still pretty neat though. Pretty amazing to see something like that out here. And uh, one of the things I love is that you would just never know um, what that was if you didn't know the history here. And then behind it here, like I said, that big, what looks like a hill is actually that old uh, blast shelter, bomb shelter that's been covered over now, but they used to use that as a target, I guess, when they were testing out new construction methods. So that's where I'm gonna go stand and see if I can set something up here while that smoke's still billowing in the background. All right, up at the top, you know what? I was actually wrong. That one we just looked at is not the crater from Tallboy. It is uh, a crater for sure, so there it is down there. But I thought it looked a little bit different, so the one that I'm talking about is actually over on the opposite side. So I don't have that background with um, all the smoke. And it is, it's not as like well, I mean, it's very well defined in terms of it being a little body of water in the middle of nothing else. It's not as like round as I pictured, which is me obviously being a little picky, but I do love the fact that everything else around it's very dark and it's pretty well defined out there. So um, I'll set up here. This is exactly where I was last time. I'm gonna get the ladder set up, see if it was worth bringing out. So I actually do think this one might be worth checking out quickly. You know, if you come down here a bit, you can hide those uh, diggers and trucks and stuff, because this one is a really nicely defined circle here. So I think it's worth checking out. We'll test out Werner here, new travel buddy, which is gonna be awesome. So one, one of the limitations of this old Hasselblad, it's like native ISO is 50. Personally, I don't really like going over maybe 100 with it. So it's almost 100% a tripod camera, which isn't super ideal in situations like this because that's not gonna give me, that might be all right. It needs to be higher. And that is one of the downs, well not downsides, but just where the GFX gives you a lot more flexibility. So my decision between these two cameras continues, but I think right now we're gonna shoot with the GFX. I love the scene, I actually, this gives like a nice perspective change. I love the composition as well. I just feel like this is probably something that I'd enjoy more uh, come spring or even in summer when there was just a little bit more color. It feels really, really uh, bleak right now, which hey, could work when I see the image after, but yeah, don't know if I'm sold on it right now. So I might check out that side. It is interesting though. So we'll jump back into things in a second, just have to quickly talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Squarespace. So this year I've wanted to place more focus on my website and that includes giving it a refresh and an update with new work. Something that is incredibly easy to do using Squarespace. They have a wide range of really nice professional looking templates to choose from, but then also they give you complete control of how your images are displayed, including gallery styles, image sizes, thumbnails, captions, and more. 
You can also customize all of their aspects of your site using their simplified drag and drop designer. It's giving you endless options for your business with things like online shops to sell your work or even hosting your own courses. So check out squarespace.com today, sign up for a free trial, test it out, and when you're ready to launch, you can use my link below to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, I can see how this one would work. I actually do really like how wide open this is here, and it's like the brightness of the water on the ground there and the crater matches the sky and makes for this really interesting contrast. So this one could work. You're not as like, up in all well, the foreground kind of muddiness and stuff. That one could be interesting. I do for sure like the composition again, just like that last one. I don't know if it's like a return at another time of year. It's not as bleak. Wait for a few minutes and see what the sky does. So I went back and scanned my four x five image of this scene from last year. And what started to become apparent very quickly is that this is an area that is definitely gonna need some interesting weather to make it work. Even though I like the composition, I feel like some storm clouds, some rain, something else to add to this would really help it out. All right, just got out to this next spot here. I actually didn't plan on coming here, but it's kind of close to that last area it was. This is the old observation post. So it's in this clearing, which is really interesting, but this is obviously where they would, you know, stand there and watch some of the target practice. So strange to have this out here in the middle of nowhere. Go around on the inside. I think they have like a little plaque up here. Pretty neat. Hard to imagine just sitting in here looking at these little cracks. So I also photographed this location on 4x5 last year and this was at the start of the summer and even though it's a lot less bleak, there's a lot more color, it also feels like an area that would benefit from some sort of extra element to add a bit more mood. Okay, so I think this is uh, where I'll spend the rest of the day. That uh, big mound is directly behind the camera that I was on top of before. Craters over there. There are a bunch of craters here as well. I'm assuming at some point they'd done a controlled burn here because it's all like this gnarled charred wood, which is pretty cool looking. But as you go through here, there's massive, massive craters everywhere. So it like, has a very strange feeling to it, almost like, you know, this happened not long ago. So here's one right here. How cool is that? This one's deep too. This one here is massive, whoa. Look at that, huge. Wow, that's really cool. Another one right here. Beyond it, they're everywhere out here. It's crazy, and like I said, it, you know, with how, with the controlled burn or whatever was going on out here, it almost makes it feel like this was very recent. So it has like a very, yeah, strange feel to it. I got some horses coming over to see me, which would be pretty cool. I'm actually gonna stop here in a second and try and be a little quiet and see if these horses come over because it looks like they're going to. It's one of the things I absolutely love about it out here. It's just so cool. All right, so I just came from over there and on my way out, noticed this uh, crater here, which is actually one of the most interesting ones so far and not as busy. I love the reflection of the branches in the water there. So getting pretty dark out. I think I'll set up and shoot it though. And at the very least it's uh, one for the future. 
So overall, I've never been so fascinated by an area and also had such a difficult time shooting it. It's just an incredibly busy landscape and one of those places that I think is going to need the right weather and right conditions to make work. But it's a challenge I'm willing to accept, even if it means making a handful of trips back. These days are tough. I come out here and I always just wanna, you know, have so much pressure on myself to make something. I think some of that also is obviously, you know, sharing this process as I go, which is important to me, especially with these projects this year. Really wanna just like document the, the process and have something that I can kind of look back on and hopefully something, you know, that provides some, some value for people as well. But I do wanna just keep, you know, I wanna, days like this I wanna share as well because, this is the reality of photography, is that it's a very slow process at times, and it's difficult, and it takes a lot of work. You know, I've certainly realized that over the years I've been doing this, and I think sometimes nowadays, you know, the internet is such an extreme place where like everything always has to be like, making the best photos of my life, or you know, some extreme thing happening, or some dramatic thing. <laughs> I think if you're working away on, on uh, like a body of work especially, it's a lot of days like this, which for me, I take away locations, things that I'm, I'm kind of uh, putting on a list for when the conditions are right. And this field out here, that is one to return to for sure, and this spot, so definitely not a waste.